Welcome to Nolensville First United Methodist Church, where we strive to be a neighborhood church where people experience a life-changing relationship with Jesus in a welcoming church family. We are so glad that you are watching. We're going to worship our Lord and celebrate VBS week together. Welcome. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. With all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind. And with all of my strength With all my heart, with all my soul With all my mind, with all my strength With all my heart, with all my soul With all my mind, with all my strength with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength, I will love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we give thanks for this opportunity to worship. We know that across distance and time, we are united by the power of your Holy Spirit. Assure us now of your presence with us. Prepare us now to worship you. Take away anything that might come between us and you during this time, Lord, that we might be fully present so that in a little while we can go a changed people a people ready to share your message of hope and redemption. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Bad news everywhere. Broken hearts in need of prayer. But there's hope in his grace. And together we can give it away. Why do we hesitate? One day might be too late We gotta share the gospel from our heart Cause there's no better place to start Oh, love your neighbor Love your neighbor as yourself Church. 
words, let's change the game. Show the power in Jesus' name. Love the lost and the hurtful too. Remember who is living in you. Today's first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verses 6 through 8. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. Let us pray. Loving God, we give thanks for the reading of the word and ask that you bring forth the very word of God for us wherever we are, that we might hear you anew. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.
light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, sin's curse has lost its grip on me, for I Precious blood of Christ No guilt in life, no fear in death This is the power of Christ in me From life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny No power of hell calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand let us pray together almighty God we give thanks for this opportunity to come to you in prayer. You know what's on our hearts, Lord, long before we speak. Hear us anew. As we pray for those who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers as we pray for all those who are faced with new and difficult decisions about work or school or care for loved ones during this pandemic. Lord, hear our prayers. As we pray for all anywhere who this day do not yet know your great love for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. As we pray, Lord, for ourselves, for the ways that we've failed to live into your call upon our lives, for the hope and desire to be something new, Lord. We ask forgiveness and new mercies and new strength. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. Fill us anew with the courage and faith of your Son, who showed us what it means to live and to love and to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For today's tithes and offerings, we invite you to continue giving the e-giving app, which is found on the website, or to mail your offering to the P.O. Box, which is also found on the website. We know that these are difficult times, and so we are blessed and appreciative for anything that you are able to do. Let us pray and bless today's offering. Loving God, we give thanks for all the gifts you've given us. Above all things, the gift of your Son, 
who gave himself that we might know life anew, abundantly, and everlastingly. Pour forth that same grace upon the offering today, that it might be transformed into grace for others until all come to know of your love and your righteousness. It's in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Will you join with me as we sing together, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Good morning. Well, today is an extra special day because today we kick off Compassion Camp. We are going to talk about compassion. We're going to hear some stories from the Bible where people um, show compassion for others. And remember, compassion is when you see someone who's hurting and you feel that hurt with them and you work to ease their hurt. So I'm going to give you a little bitty sneak peek and show you one of our Bible stories um, that, that we're going to be going over later in the week. I'm going to go ahead and share that with you now. Enjoy. The Greatest Commandment, Mark 12, 28 through 31, and Deuteronomy 6. Illustrated by Abby Hagen and read for you by Kingston Eller. Jesus and the disciples spent a lot of time in Jerusalem. One day, he was at the temple, a place where people gathered to worship God. And he was teaching and telling stories. A lot of people listened eagerly, but many had questions. The temple leaders and elders were unsure of him and asked, Who gave you the power to do and say all these crazy things? Some were jealous and wanted to trick him. So they asked, Should the people pay taxes? Others were worried and asked, What happens in the resurrection and the afterlife? One temple leader was very curious about Jesus. He saw that Jesus was kind and wise, and he asked him, which one of God's laws or commandments is the most important? Jesus answered, the first one is all we know and hear. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. Before the temple leader could ask more, Jesus went on. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. These two are the most important of God's laws. Didn't Kingston and Abby do a great job on that Bible story? Well, Mark 12, 28 through 31 is actually going to be our memory verse for the week. The greatest commandments. We learned in that Bible story that Jesus says the greatest commandments are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, and two, to love your neighbor as yourself. So we are going to talk this week about how we can show compassion for ourselves and for our neighbors, and we're going to grow in our faith, and we're going to have so much fun together. I really can't wait, guys, for you guys to see all the surprises in store. We're going to have fun with crafts, and we're going to have fun with snacks and some great conversations at home. So can't wait to see you guys soon at Compassion Camp. All right, let's say a little prayer for our week, shall we? This will be a repeat after me prayer. Loving God, we give thanks for all you do. We thank you for our neighbors. And we thank you for teaching us all about compassion. Help us to grow as disciples this week. Amen. See you in a bit. Bye guys.
Today's message comes from Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all your heart and with all understanding and with all strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, this is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any questions. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let me set the scene for us. Jesus is in Jerusalem at this time. We come in sort of towards the end of this moment. He's in Jerusalem. He's in the heart of Jewish thought and the religious elite. Around him at this moment are Pharisees and Sadducees. These are both different schools of Jewish religious thought. Both were interpreters of the law or the Bible at the time. They were teachers too. Pharisees believed in a resurrection and Sadducees did not. This was the main disagreement between the two, but they had lots of other disagreements. They loved to argue. There are also scribes around. Scribes study scripture also, but you can think of them as copyists or editors and teachers. There were also Herodians around. If you read a little bit before this in the scripture, you'll see all these different groups. Herodians were Jewish scholars that were heavily influenced by Greek thought and followed Roman law. All of these different groups are around. And this is the heart of sort of Jewish religious thought and the religious elite. And Jesus is teaching there. And what he's teaching challenges all of these groups. So they're asking him questions. Most of these questions are designed to get him to say something that's considered illegal or heretical. Jesus answers so well and with such authority that the argument is not really going their way. I encourage you to go and read right before this text. You'll see that. It's not really working. He's not getting caught in any of their traps and he's answering in ways that they've never thought of before. And so they're not winning. But they're not convinced or converted either. They're probably more angry. They're getting more angry and more determined as Jesus tells them this truth. It's kind of like Facebook, right? Like you, you say something and your hope is to maybe change somebody's heart, but it just makes them more angry. Or maybe somebody says something to you and instead of thinking about it, you just think of a good counter argument. Think of this as live action Facebook, the way things used to be. Can you picture this now? It's a bunch of men, all right? They're all from different camps who are arguing to see who would win. They're sort of flexing their theological muscles with each other. Same thing happens every Thanksgiving at my house, but it's usually about politics, right? The one thing that all these men have in common is that they believe in their system. They believe in the temple system. All these different groups all these differences between them, but they're united against Jesus in this moment because they believe in their system. They believe in the temple, the need for sacrifices. Just to refresh your memory, the idea that one would go to the temple to make a sacrifice in order to atone for sin. This is what had built up this religious uh, elite and system around them. All of these men were interpreters of what the law would say, so they told you when it was time to go and what needed to be done. This whole system had been built up, and so they had all of that in common, and Jesus was challenging that. In fact, Jesus is the one who's telling them, you've got it all wrong. Not only is he teaching something new, but it challenges their very way of life. 
It challenges their ideas of self-worth, their economy, their ideas of justice. This isn't simply a little friendly disagreement. This is a serious matter. Are you with me now? Can you picture this? Can you close your eyes for a minute and picture that? They're getting heated. Sort of a, they're not violent physically yet, but they're definitely an angry intellectual mob and Jesus. Then a scribe. Remember, the scribes were part of this group. A scribe who had been listening seems to realize that Jesus is doing really well. He seems to not only just say Jesus is maybe winning this argument, but it's starting to convince him. So he asks his question, and that's where we come to today. He asks a real question. Not one to try to trip Jesus up. It almost feels like this scribe who had spent his whole life interpreting the law all all the way down to these minuscule rules is asking a real big serious life question. He wants to know which one is first. Of all the law, which one is the most important? He wants Jesus to give him the whole shebang, right? So Jesus responds, I want to read it to you again at verse 29. He said, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And then he goes on and he says, the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe is amazed The scribe has asked this serious question that affects his entire life. And when Jesus answers, he's amazed and he agrees with Jesus. He says out loud in front of all these people, he agrees and he says, Jesus's answer is even more important than burnt offerings and sacrifices. It's even more important than the whole system that's been built up. Jesus tells him that he's not far from the kingdom of God. This shuts down the whole argument. All right? It was as if in this moment Jesus dropped the microphone on him. Okay? The whole thing is done. It shuts him down. No one's willing to keep challenging Jesus. Something happened in that moment. It's not that they were convinced. It's not that they wanted to change or were being converted because we know that they'll eventually kill Jesus for these teachings. I think what happened is this mob saw one of their own transformed. They saw this scribe begin to believe. I mean, this is a powerful moment. It shut down a whole mob. It seems really important. In the Bible, the the heading that has been added in says the first commandment or the greatest commandment in my Bible. So this seems important. Like we, we should really understand this. I hope you agree. So the first part of what Jesus said is a quote directly from Deuteronomy. In fact, you could argue that what Jesus says here in Mark is a summary of the Ten Commandments. These Ten Commandments were the very basis of thought and religious idea for all of these men. These Ten Commandments that people then turned into more rules and more rules and wrote volumes and volumes about how to interpret, how to interpret and live by. I'll give you a quick review if you, need a, if you need a refresher. They're found in Exodus chapter 20 if you want to go read them for yourself. But here's the quick cliff notes. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, and thou shalt not covet. So depending on how you count, the first four or five are about loving God, and the last five or six are about loving our neighbor. Jesus summed it up. His Jewish brethren for many, many generations had been living according to a checklist. A checklist that they then made amends for violating with some kind of sacrifice. Jesus wants them to understand that this is not about a checklist anymore. It's about transformation. 
The commandments are how we know if we're submitting to the transformation. A checklist is about your head. Transformation is about your heart. What Jesus commanded did not make things easier. Right? Like, I don't like checklists, but what Jesus said is actually, I think, harder. Let's think about it. I'm going to be brutally honest. I cannot think of a single time that I've been able to really love the one true God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and all my strength. I'm too easily distracted. I'm too easily self-absorbed. I'm too comfortable with how things are. I'm not sure I love our little system, but it's familiar and safe for me. Jesus was commanding all to seek this deeper transformative love of God above all other things. I want to do that. Or let's take the second part, loving my neighbor as myself. I want to tell you that I'm good at this. I want to say that, yes, I've got that. But my goodness, if I'm honest, I know I try. I try to care about others. I try to do for others. But loving them as I love myself, caring about them as much as I love myself, I don't think that I've gotten there either. I think I'm good at it when it's not too hard for me. You see, I worry that we are more like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Herodians and the scribes than we are like Jesus. Our hearts are still in need of transformation. If we truly believe that these are the first and second greatest commandments, why are we so willing to ignore them? It seems as if we would rather argue with everyone about everything than simply admit that we're in need of transformation. We would rather get red-faced and use insults against people than to admit that we're wrong. We would rather pontificate about who's right or wrong. We would rather argue about politics, debate facts. We would rather argue about interpretations of the Bible than to simply stop and say we're in need of God's grace. We're in need of transformation. It seems as if we would rather continue believing we have it figured out than to admit that we are sinners in need of Jesus. We are far too likely to point at others and say that person needs Jesus. Rarely do we point at ourselves and admit to others that we need Jesus. I don't know about you, but I want to know a world where we can all truly love God and our neighbor as ourselves. I want to know that world. I want to live in that world. I want to know what that's like. I want to live, truly live like that. I want that for my children. I want that for my friends. I want that for everyone. Don't you? Here's the truth. What we're doing isn't working. Maybe I'll say that just for myself. What I'm doing isn't working. My self-absorption, worry, desire, needs to, and needs don't seem to really be fulfilling me. It doesn't seem to really work the way I want to do it. The good news is this. Jesus can and will and is at work offering true transformation. Jesus isn't waiting on us to come to him with a perfect checklist. But instead to come to him knowing that we cannot yet live into his command so that we can allow Jesus to show us how. The argument ended that day, not because they were all convinced, but because they saw one of their own come to a realization. He realized this, and if you get nothing out of this sermon, I want you to hear this. He realized this thing. God is for us, not against us. God didn't give a list of commands so that we could fall short of God and realize that God doesn't like us. God gave us a list of commands so that we could see that we fall short and that God loves us and wants more for us and offers us that opportunity to be transformed. God loves us. That scribe realized that the law was not about God's judgment, but about a call toward God's grace. 
that can transform us. I want to say that again. That scribe realized in that moment that the law that he had devoted his life to was not about God's judgment, but about a call towards God's grace that can transform us. Jesus says that the scribe is close to the kingdom of God. He had understood in his head. And what he was lacking was to understand maybe in his heart. To make this new understanding of God's love active in his life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Like me, you may have given your life to Christ long ago. But my friends, what if we strove to give our full life to Christ? Not just now, but every day. Or maybe you're watching this and you get it, you hear it, right? You get it here, but you want to get it here. I do. I want to get it here. The good news is that the spirit is waiting, always with us and ready to guide us. What if through prayer, worship, service, Holy communion, singing, Bible study, fellowship, all these gifts that God has given us. What if we started really seeking to live in God's grace above and beyond all things? Before our wants and needs, before politics, before everything else, we sought first God's love. I'm pretty sure that I cannot perfectly love God and neighbor yet. But I'm also convinced that by the grace of God, I can change. So the question I want to leave us with is this. Is this really the greatest commandment for us? My friends, is this really the greatest commandment for you? To love the Lord your God with all you have. And to love your neighbor as yourself. Let us pray. God, you know our hearts and our minds. You know that we can quickly be turned aside or caught up in our own ways. We ask that right now you might accept us anew. Remind us that we are yours and that you are ours. And show us again the way of salvation and transformation. We long to love you and others as ourselves. We long to live like Jesus. It's in his name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you
Would you receive this blessing? As you go forth from this virtual place, may you go willing and ready to accept God's transformative grace. And may you find the love that awaits you there. May you share it with others. Amen.